Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and a bit of an exclusive. We've got early access to the Glossop line, Manchester to Hadfield and Glossop. Big thanks to DTG giving me early access on the PS5 as part of the DTG Ambassador program. I'm pretty excited about this. I liked what I saw on the preview stream on Thursday night. So I've literally, you can see there on the right hand side, I've literally just installed this now. We're going to fire it up. We're going to see what it's all about. We'll run a couple of services, take a look round, just a general introduction to what's going on. And uh, hopefully it will give you guys a taste of what you can get your hands on tomorrow morning when this releases. Releases for consoles around 10 a.m. UK time, I believe, on Tuesday. PC is a little bit later in the day. It's usually about 6 p.m., isn't it, around that time. So... Um, without further ado, let's have a quick look. It says climb aboard the Hyper Networker and embark on a journey in Northwest England, good old Northwest. Magnificent Mancunian scenery comes to life along the echoes of the fallen Woodhead Line. Surviving as part of the Northern Trains Network, experience the quaint Glossop Line in Train Sim World. Let's dive into it. Let's have a look what we've got. Training modules. We've got the route introduction. Let's run that in a second. We'll do that and then we'll get an overview of what it's about. Uh, I shouldn't have come back out of that scenario. So we've got six. We've got waterworks, 35 minutes. Gossip line. That's the one where we take photographs, which we saw in the previous stream. That's 40 minutes, that one. Three point turn, 35 minutes. Depot delivery. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? Taking the train down to the depot for repairs. Or your local? Well, I certainly am. That's 40 minutes. On guard, where we check all the tickets. Which, actually, I've done in real life when I was on a YTS. Those of you who are old enough to remember what a YTS or youth training scheme was, it's probably the equivalent of today's apprenticeship. I did that when I was 16. Checking tickets on a pacer between Preston and Blackpool. So there you go. We might come back to Preston Blackpool at some point. Fingers crossed. I know nothing, but I'm praying for that. That will hold a special place in my heart if that releases. So those are the scenarios. Let's have a look then at the timetable. So we do get the 323, of course, in the new Northern Trains livery, which is nice. Another brand new operator. And you can see over on the right hand side, I'm already level 24 in the 323. But, um, you know, it's just... Another train we've had before, but I love that livery. I don't mind. It, it's part of this route. It's what runs on this route. So this route will not cost you as much to, to buy as the other routes as well. Keep that in mind. So this has got a lot, you know, it's got a lot going for it. Uh, we've got the Class 66 layering in, of course. Uh, we've also got the, the 158, which is coming over from Midland Mainline. I believe there's only one playable service. The rest of the time, you'll see that as AI. Uh, we've got rail tours with the Class 37, the Class 20, the 40, and we've also got the Jubilee coming in from, I believe, Spirit of Steam. So there's plenty of things to do with this. I think what we're going to do first, I think we'll do the route introduction. And uh, that will tell us all about the collectibles, etc., etc. A bit of a history of the line, hopefully. And then we'll take it from there, I think. So I hope you guys are excited. Thanks for joining me on, on this one. A DTG ambassador with a northern accent. You're getting the genuine article. I'm not a mank, so I won't be saying Manchester. But I'm not from Welcome far away. To Manchester, a bustling city in the north of England known for its manufacturing architecture, culture and sports. I will say one thing, the staff this are even wearing the northern Piccadilly has been in staff uniforms. Quite nice, isn't it? And is the third busiest station in the UK outside of London. All right, let's there's have a wander around. Over there. Fix it while you're here. It says there's a route map. Now, what I want to know is, can I get to the main concourse or is that... Is that blocked off, actually? 
these doors are genuinely always open and you can get through this is where all the shops are or is it just up here they're letting us through nope we can't get through oh that's a shame that's a real shame the new concourse through there is pretty good with all the shops etc it was modernized just a few years ago it's not been like that long uh, the whole station's been done, so let's just do what it says anyway for now. So we're walking up the platform. Look at the canopy, let's just take a second. Look at the detail there. Brilliant, love that. And this is what Piccadilly's, it's, this is what it's like, you know, it's, it's very, uh, it's very airy now with this roof, like this. Uh, I'm just checking the pick, the spelling of Piccadilly because I did see when I was downloading it Piccadilly was spelt with one C rather than a double C but it seems to be okay in the actual game which is the main thing so we'll carry on it's a good old walk down here I can vouch for this here's a route map there are more tasks to find be sure to apply the route maps, put up tourist posters, restock newspapers, and refill the planters. Okay, so here's a 323 in the Northern Livery. You've already seen me running this. I did have a 323 in Northern Livery on the uh, Birmingham Cross City line. So, but this is the official, this is the official livery, which has been licensed to uh, DTG. Uh, it's nice to see it's not all shiny, is it? Look at this. We've got dirt there between the uh, the units, which is quite a nice touch. Normally, these are shown in all pristine condition, aren't they? Which is sometimes a requirement of the license itself. You've got to show them in a, in a perfect light. However, this one has got a bit of weathering, which is good. Let's get on board. Take a seat anywhere you like. Let's see here. Why not? So we've got the onboard information systems up here as well. It's not showing anything, but this is a tutorial. Oh, it says this is this is Piccadilly. That one's working. And so is this one now. That's good. Off we go. When this station was opened in 1842 by the Manchester and Birmingham Railway, it was named Store Street and had two platforms, one for arrivals and another for departures. Shortly after, in 1847, an agreement with Sheffield, Ashton under Line and Manchester Railway allowed the Manchester and Birmingham Railway to use their nearby London Road premises. The station was then known as London Road. By the 1860s, the popularity of the route meant London Road Station was getting overcrowded and the competitive and fragmented nature of the railways at the time meant the relationship between the two companies had broken down. Eventually, they agreed to build a new, much larger London Road Station designed to be partitioned down the middle. The 1921 Railways Act grouped the 120 railway companies at the time into the Big Four, but the station continued to be divided, even after the railways were nationalised in 1948. In 1958, the then ageing London Road Station was completely rebuilt into and renamed to Piccadilly after the nearby... See, Piccadilly is spelt Gardens. wrong there. That's what I was saying. In 1998, it would undergo further extensive renovations at a cost of £100 million in preparation for the Commonwealth Games. At the time, this was the most expensive railway improvement project that the UK had seen. Not that I'm being this picky, is a no BR pun intended. <laughs> 323 electric multiple unit in Northern Trains livery. They were first built in 1992 and were some of the last trains to enter service under British Rail before privatisation in the mid-1990s. Climb aboard the Hyper Networker and embark on a journey in Northwest England. Yeah, let's do it. Magnificent Mancunian scenery will come to life along the echoes of the fallen Woodhead Line. Welcome to Train Sim World, Glossop Line, Manchester to Hadfield and Glossop. Oh, it's great. This is up my street. So once again, like I said, after the Peak Forest, I, th I find those introductions actually very useful because uh, 
you know, sometimes you hear it once and you don't go back, do you? But it's nice to get it's nice to get that little potted history. Uh, and in fact, just outside the station, he, he mentioned there, uh, Matt was talking, he mentioned it was called Store Street. There is a Store Street right outside the station. Just a bit, a little bit of a, a, a detail for you there. So mm. let's go to the main menu. Now, one thing I want to do before we jump into a service, I want to just have a quick wander around Piccadilly again. We did a little bit just then. I want to go over the bridge and I want to go to the Preston Bound platforms. I just want to have a quick look because this is the platform where I've caught most of the trains back to and from to Manchester when I was working there at Rail House just outside Piccadilly. So uh, we'll, we'll just go back in and uh, we'll spawn on foot, I think. So if I go to timetable on foot, Piccadilly, 10 a.m. Let's just do that. Why not? And we'll just see. Uh, we'll just see how it's modelled. From the brief look that I saw, it looked it looked quite nice. Uh, so it's it's put us right at the top end. So I tell you what we'll do. I'm not going to walk across the track. I am going to go up the stairs. So I'm going to do that. And platform 14 is what we want, and it's all the way down here. So it is a little quiet. You know, so it's quiet trains-wise for 10 a.m. It's definitely quiet people-wise. There's not a lot of people walking around. However, once trains are about to depart or come into the station, it's usually usual, isn't it, that we see a lot more passengers start to spawn in. So here we go. So down to platform 14. Let's do it. There is a train in. Where is this going? There you go. Blackpool North, you see. Is this something we're going to see soon? The real Blackpool North train? Come on, please. <laughs> now, there was something I wanted to uh, to show you here, actually. Um, this is the old British Telecom offices. I don't know if that still is British Telecom. It's been a while since uh, I have actually being here but that's good it is on stilts like that it definitely is on stilts um there is looking back at piccadilly station from the outside as you can see which is quite good this is uh this is one of the office buildings the railway office buildings not the one that i worked in that was on the other side uh, but let's come down here because if this train allows us i want to show you something just opposite this 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 is exactly right this this is what it looks like i just say that even down to these panels ah good that train's going um down to this panel in it's exactly the same let's just get this is quite a long train so let's just let this move and then i will uh, show you what i want to show you which is actually just over this side of the train There it goes. Oh, could we be driving that to Blackpool quite soon? I don't know. <laughs> so, right, what I want to show you is this. And it's nice that it's in. See this building down here? That was a pub. There. And uh, I can't remember the name of the pub. It's uh, It's got windows in it. it. I don't know what it's like just now. It, it was boarded up for a time and wasn't used. One night when I was coming back from work, it was quite late. I stood here. And uh, I stood here. It's just a little tale. Lots and lots of police started started coming in. This is in the 90s, early 90s. Lots of police were coming down. They flew in around here into this car park at the side. Lots and lots of stuff going on. I didn't know what the heck was going on. They were doing some raid at this pub, which was open at that time. It was fully functional. And as I looked down, I could see TV cameras. And it was only when I noticed Robbie Coltrane walking down here that I was actually watching an episode of Cracker being uh, being produced, being filmed. 
And uh, those of you who are a certain age will remember Cracker being on ITV or whatever your regional uh, independent television company is. It's Granada. There's Granada up here in the northwest. But they were filming Cracker. And uh, it's interesting because uh, that episode indeed is in Cracker. And it was odd because they kept stopping. They kept redoing the raid. The police came. They ran through. They went out the back. But it's nice that that pub is in and it does look like that. There you go. A little story. <laughs> now we can get to the trains. I just wanted to check, though, that Piccadilly really did look like Piccadilly. And it does. I'm quite impressed. I do like it. You know? So, we're going to go back over the other side. In fact, what we'll do is, now we've had a look. Because we've looked at the main station. We can go back up here and it just takes us to uh, where we went down to platform 14. We went down there earlier. But uh, we can go down to the main concourse again. You see the passengers are starting to fill up now. So we've obviously got some services due. So they're all starting to uh, they're all starting to appear. So it looks pretty good. Looks pretty good to me. Let's uh, let's get in a train, shall we? We've done enough talking. Uh, let's go to the main menu. We're gonna have to duck out and go back into the timetable, and uh, we'll run one down to Glossop first of all so the way it runs is we go from Manchester Piccadilly down to Glossop we would then switch ends come out of Glossop go to Hadfield then from Hadfield we would go back to Glossop again and then we would go back up to Piccadilly that's the way it goes so it's a bit it's a bit of an unusual route isn't it in some respects but we'll we'll talk about that whilst we uh, whilst we go so we're going to jump into the 323 and uh, we want, let's have a look, Manchester Piccadilly to Hadfield via Glossop. So we want one of these ones, don't we? Shall we do the half eight? That's part one. Let's just have a look. Part one, part two. Okay, so let's do, and have we got part three? No, part one and part two. Manchester Piccadilly via Glossop. Okay. Well, we'll pick a part one and then we'll just do it. And we'll work it out as we go. So, yeah. So, 323, you've seen it before. If you've got the Birmingham Cross City line. If you haven't got the Birmingham Cross City line, so you've not driven a 323, you're in for a bit of a treat. It's quite easy to drive. We'll get everything set up, first of all. We'll get the master key on. Uh, and I need to remember not to do that and to do it this way. We'll unlock the doors on the right hand side. The GSMR has already picked up our service number, which is quite nice. Tail lights are off. We've got the day lights on. And then we need the safety systems, which are over here. Let me just remind myself which ones we need. So, AWS. That's okay, that's in normal, normal vigilance, we'll have that on, and DSD is in normal. Okay, good. Wait until 8.33, so let's have a quick look outside. There is the onboard information system there, scrolling across, saying that we're going to Hadfield. It's quite nice. We've had plenty of these northern liveries. There's a northern livery for everything. You know I've got a livery for the 150, for the 323, uh, for the 158, all from the Creators Club. Uh, you'll probably find a 323 on there, actually, in, in whatever your favourite livery just happens to be, I think. Um, so there's plenty of choice. We're just going to run the standard today so you can have a look. Everything is northern at the moment at Piccadilly just acknowledge that got about 10 seconds till we depart so let's get the doors closed I'm just using the shortcuts on the controller for this so this is the PS5 version just to remind you and uh, of course in this 323 one of the nice things about it is we've got 
quite a decent view out of the front for a change. We've got this nice big driver's window. Because a lot of these units have got quite a slit window, haven't they? Uh, but it's quite nice to have a, a, a quite a good view for a change. And I always like that about the Birmingham Cross City Line as well. You can have a good look at what's going on around you. As well as enjoying driving the train. So, let's go. Our first stop will be Ashbury's. That's 1.4 miles time. So, whilst we're doing that, don't forget if you're new to the channel, please do consider subscribing. I would be uh, ever so grateful for that. And uh, we've got over 2,000 subscribers now. And uh, we're building up this little community. Plenty of train sim, training simulation, fern bus... Uh, trucking sims, bus sims, you name it, they're all on the channel. So hopefully you will find something that you enjoy. And thank you very much for coming in today and watching. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be with you all. All right. So we are just leaving Manchester Piccadilly. Let's have a look outside. We're just leaving it behind. And of course, it's by far the largest station that we'll visit today. We will leave the city behind and uh, go slightly more rural as we progress. So this has got a combined brake and throttle lever. So as I said, very easy to operate. And uh, this runs about, about 13 miles, isn't it? About 13 miles, it'll take you around an hour, just less, to do the whole round trip. So this is a route where you could really, you know, get into it and, and do a shift, as it were, uh, and do several of these runs. I think that's what I'm going to do. So we're, we're going to do some live streaming, of course, of this, and I think we'll do a little bit of that. And we'll start off at uh, a certain part of day, and we'll carry on, and we'll see how many we can get through. In a couple of hours this is the perfect route for that and as Matt said on the previous stream as well actually it's quite a good route for if you've not got much time and you want to dip in you know you can get down to uh, Manchester to Glossop well we'll find out how long that takes I don't think it's gonna take long is it it's gonna take 20 minutes maybe So the services that are provided, all 200 and odd services, are all quite short services. The whole trip down to Glossop and Hadfield uh, and back to Glossop and back, as you saw, is broken down into parts. So you don't do it all as one service. You do it over several parts. So you can do one or more of those parts, just, you know, however time suits you. And as I said at the beginning, don't forget, this, this route is slightly cheaper than normal routes. And uh, UK, it's 19 99 and there are various discounts going on as well. Uh, if you're on PlayStation, if you've got PlayStation Plus, there's loyalty discounts on Xbox as well, and on PC. So just uh, look out for those in your chosen store when you go to pick this up tomorrow. This is Ashbury's, and I'm going to take off that stop marker as soon as I uh, stop here. Uh, and that's my first breaking of this route, and I've already gone past the, uh, the actual stop marker. <laughs> Let me just take this off, because you know I don't run with the, uh, you know I don't run with this on. Uh, stop marker off, so it tends to do that every time you get a new route, and you play it for the first time. It seems to switch that on for you. Doesn't retain your uh, usual setting for that. So we got a few takers. That's quite nice. It's quite a busy train, actually, isn't it? I mean, it is just after half eight in the morning, so maybe we would expect that. Off we go. Guide bridge, 3.4 miles. So for all you uh, hornies out there. Mm -hmm. 
there you go. I know you all like a bit of horn. So there was the uninterrupted two-tone horn. But uh, on this stretch, we can get up to 60 miles per hour. So we'll put it in notch four, which is the maximum. And we'll see what this is all about. I'm liking it so far. We've got freight over here at the depot. Let's take a screenshot. The first one of the new route. Uh, we're speeding already. So once again, certainly from the PS5 point of view, it looks really good. It's getting better and better now on console. love jumping into a new route for the first time and as I say because this is getting nearer to my patch and because of how well I know Manchester Piccadilly this one's got a special place for me I think uh, Victoria did as well Manchester Victoria did on Northern Trans Pennine I think we're all like that aren't we if we're lucky enough to get our local area coming to TSW I think uh We'd all feel a little bit spoiled, wouldn't we? We'd feel a little bit special. But because I used to work for BR and then Regional Railways Northwest, TS TSW, you know, it gives me a bit of nostalgia. I'm not going to lie. It takes me back to when I was first in the working world and uh, I was out of school, straight out of school, straight into work. And. Uh, it really does fill me with nostalgia. Now that now that Manchester Piccadilly's in, it really does. And if we get that Preston to Blackpool I keep talking about, well, you're going to want to watch my reaction to that. You're going to come want to come back to this channel when that comes out, and you're going to want to see me play that because you'll hear a bit of passion in my voice when that comes out. So make sure you hit that subscribe button right now so that you don't miss that when that comes out because... Uh, this is going to be the place to be if we see that route. So I've got my fingers crossed. I'm really crossed. That's about the fourth time I've said it in this in this video alone. But I really, really am. And uh, I can't get anybody to tell me anything. I can't get anybody to confirm it or deny it. Or <laughs> Somebody tell me. Actually, they, they're not going to tell me. Because if they tell me, then, you know, I, I might be likely to do a GAD and spill the beans. You know, and that wouldn't be any good because because I'd be so passionate about it, I wouldn't be able to resist. So uh, they've probably told everybody else and not told me. So there you go. <laughs> but if it comes out, I'm just saying, come back to this channel because uh, this will be where it's at. All right, this is Guide Bridge. You see this big space over to the over to the left hand side. Um, it was obviously a lot wider back in the day looks like there's probably at one time there's probably four different tracks looks wide enough for that another 323 there in the station so combined brake and throttle handle so I'm just gonna put it into braking notch one See if we can do a better stop this time. How are we doing for time? I'm just over. This is our first run. It's more about fact finding, isn't it? And just having a look at the route more than being super on time. If you've been on my streams and my videos before, you know that uh, I like to have a good look around as we're uh, moving along, especially in a first look. So this is Guide Bridge. What a pity we can't get collectibles in this view. That'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? Oh, 
off we go. Flowery Field, 1.6 miles. So we talked about at the beginning a couple of other new things that are coming in on this route. So we do have the scenario where we are going to step out with our camera, take a few pictures as we go, then those pictures are going to be displayed at Manchester Piccadilly at the end of the scenario on the uh, on the boards on the platform. That's quite nice. That's quite a novel a novel idea for all you guys that like going out taking pictures on railways that'll probably suit you down to the ground uh, and then there's the uh, guard scenario as well where uh, we we check tickets we operate the doors all that good stuff we look after the safety of the passengers that's in the and dovetail did say as you're playing that because it's confined just now to one scenario um, if they need to make changes to it or improvements they can do because it's confined to that one scenario but they did say if you've got any feedback on that once you've played it, if you really enjoy it, if you absolutely hate it, if there's problems with it, to feed that back on the forums. And, you know, you never know. If that is a popular thing, then this could be the first sign of having more than one role within the game. Because it could be that if it is very, very popular, that there's a way to shoehorn that into the core game and have that on every route in timetable mode. It isn't like that now. It's very much a test. But um, I've not played it yet because this is the first thing we've done. But I think, you know, it might be something actually that you quite enjoy because it's different. Some of you may not touch it at all. It just depends really. Um, but I would like to sort of compare my real life experience of doing that with how it is in TSW so I'm going to try that out I think I'll cover that on a separate video we'll do that scenario just as one video on its own and uh, we do a bit of role play can't we why not we'll do that I'll put on my best northern accent and uh, we'll, we'll give it a try we'll see if we catch any fur dodges definitely look good on the preview stream I must admit so this is a flowery field that we're just approaching now we're a couple of minutes out a couple of minutes late after a few runs on this we'll be uh, racing along I'm sure stopping distances will be uh, on the money so I'm coming into the station quite slowly really And uh, what I'm going to do here is just briefly hop out and uh, we'll do the collectibles that we can find on this station and then you get to have a look at those. They did show them a little bit in the... Uh, whoops, let me open the doors first, that would help. There we go. Let's open that. They, they did show them in the... Oh, actually that's not good, is it? I'm going to have to jump. They did show them in the uh, preview stream. Um, I wonder what that was then. It's a light, isn't it? There's a poster. So it's bleeping because we've got off the train now. It doesn't like it. But there's one of our maps. So you can see down the bottom. It's quite unusual, isn't it? We've got Dinted Triangle. Glossop on one side. Hadfield on the other. So to provide a local service, that's why not only are we going to Glossop, but then we go to Hadfield, then back to Glossop, because all the locals want to go between the two, you see. So if we went to Hadfield, and we went all the way back to Manchester, these guys wouldn't be able to get to Glossop. They'd have to start walking, so that's why they do it. So bees, and the bee symbol is famous in Manchester, so we've got these uh, flower pots there with the bees. What else have we got? Newspapers. Newspapers are quite uh, common on these Manchester routes, aren't they? I think we had newspapers on uh, Northern Trans Pennine, as I remember. So there's others on the other side, but in the interest of time, we're going to jump back in. And uh, we'll stop this annoying bleeping that we've got going on. There we go. 
Right, let's get our local door closed. Lock the main doors. Newton for Hyde, platform two, is next in just over half a mile. So let's put it in notch four right away. Hope you guys are enjoying the video. Hope you're liking what you're seeing and you've already made your minds up to uh, to get this. Let me know if you if you uh, haven't quite made your mind up. Do you like what you see though? Is it twisting your arm? I think this is a nice little route this to be honest. I've always said to you guys on these videos that I always like a route where it feels like you're doing a job. Uh, this one to me, I know we've not got to even to gloss up yet, but the way the uh, services are structured and these little round trips that we'll be doing, it feels to me like I'm actually doing a job. I'm actually doing the job of somebody that works on the railway. Uh, and that's what I like about a lot of these. Sometimes if you go from A to B, it doesn't quite feel like that. It feels like you're just doing A run. This one feels like you're doing a job, which is which is really nice. I love that. So this is Newton for Hyde. Get some of that power off. That's a better stop. I'll take that. And party. Got people coming in and out through here. She's going down underground. Another collectible down there. Look, newspapers. So make sure you have a good explore when you turn up at these stations. I think there are 14. I think there's 14 stations. So, you know, collectibles. I think... Oh, I've unlocked the doors again, like an idiot. Uh, I think uh, collectibles are pretty achievable on this. I think all the collectibles... Yes, all the collectibles are ones that you would uh, collect on stations. So we do get some routes, don't we, where you have to have a walk along the track to uh, actually pick some of them up. But on these, they'll all be based on stations. So they should be fairly straightforward. There's three trophies, by the way. Uh, certainly on PlayStation, I think it will be the same on Xbox, achievement-wise, and PC. Uh, let me remember what those are. One is to complete the Class 323 training module, because there will be a new one, even if you've already got the one on uh, uh, Birmingham Cross City. So that's the first one. Uh, the second one is to complete one of the scenarios. I forget which, but you'll be doing that naturally anyway. Uh, and then the third trophy is, of course, to get all the collectibles, which, as I just said, should be pretty achievable on this route. Um, I tend to follow guides for some of those, as you know, but uh, I think on this one we should be able to uh, should be able to route those out quite easily. You know, you might spend a, a pleasant hour or two just uh, spawning on foot at all these stations, or indeed do this. Don't worry about staying on time. Just drive to each station as part of the normal service, but jump out and have a look. Won't take you too long. Okay, this is Godly, by the way. We didn't announce that one. Here is the, uh, the PIS showing us that we are slightly late by a minute. Showing that Hattersley is next. In point eight of a mile. Yeah, gonna have a lot of fun on this route. Do 
does accelerate as well quite quickly the 323 as you can see doesn't take long at all we were we were uphill then further down here as well we've got I think we've got a single track section so it's probably normally important to be right on time isn't it then you're not holding up other traffic this is Hattersley keep spotting those collectibles every time we come into a station keep wanting to jump out and get them <laughs> but I'll do that another time I tell you what the uh, the Lord passengers is quite quick isn't it Now, I don't know if that has been adjusted because I'm running slightly late or if that is the uh, usual time you get allowed for picking up passengers. I'll have to try and measure that in seconds and see how long we get. It's almost like we get sort of 15 seconds at the moment, but... Right, we're off to Broad Bottom in a mile. up some good speed we do have a 40 coming up so we'll take the power off in fact the 40 is after the station so we're good So don't forget, as we saw at the beginning, there's, there's a few rail tours. You can also do a bit of freight with the uh, 66. So, you know, the, the 323 is the only one that comes with the route. But if you own the other stuff, then uh, you're good for a few more services in, uh, in different trains. So we talked about it on... Uh, the Southeastern High Speed live stream the other night that the layering is getting really good now. And it's across all platforms as well because uh, I know it wasn't long ago that they were having some problems on uh, PS4 and the, the old standard Xbox with some of the layers. As far as I'm aware, I've not heard anything for a while that seems to all be fixed now uh, and it's it's the same across all platforms so even better even better see what I mean about how long we got to pick up then wasn't long at all was it Dintin is next the Dintin Triangle named because that is exactly what it is we should have looked at the route map shouldn't we so we got Piccadilly up at this end, we got the depot, Ardwick is over here. Uh, and then down this end we got Glossop, we got the Dintin Triangle, which is exactly a triangle. Uh, Glossop, Hadfield. And we do have that 40 coming up that we talked about. There it is, there's the speed board. We got what I assume is the Derbyshire Peaks over here. Uh, some of you who are a bit more local to this end of the route can uh, can let me know, but I, I think that is Derbyshire. I think a lot of walkers go to Glossop, don't they? And to uh, carry on from Glossop. Just take another screenshot there. It's a good one, isn't it, coming over there? Anyway, let's not go too slow, because... Uh, after Dinton, 
we do have quite a slow stretch down to uh, down to Glossop. So a pretty enjoyable service so far. Just taking the opportunity to have a good look round the scenery, either side of us. I wasn't sure when it was announced, you know, because it's a, it's such a short route. But actually, it's got a bit of character for me. The fact that you could come out here into this kind of you know sort of countryside after having been in Piccadilly, which, as Matt said in the introduction the third biggest station outside London that's pretty neat so we're approaching Dinton right now and the 40 mile an hour speed limit but we're ok we're only doing 31 we'll just uh, coast it in now I think it's it's flat at the moment. And just before Dintim we do come down to a ten. So let's just slowly come down. This is pretty impressive, isn't it, this? Great, isn't it? Look at that. Let's just keep it at the tent. So from Dinton, we are then straight down to Glossop. Glossop will be next. So you can see from this point onwards, we're down to single line running. So being on time, you know, in the real situation as I said is is pretty key isn't it because other trains are going to have to be waiting behind us now if you want to go to Glossop they're going to have to wait just behind us where we just were just after that viaduct until we come out of Glossop so that being said let's get everybody that needs to get on at Dinton on Don't know if this lady's coming with us or not. There she goes. You need to hurry up. They've got to shut the doors. Oh, she's being choosy which carriage she goes in, look. Oh, which area of the train? It's not exactly a carriage, is it? Right, is she getting on? She's lucky. She's lucky there. The doors were closing. You can see here, there was obviously another... There's a platform there, there's obviously uh, another track here at one time. So it is 10 around here, so we just need to be careful with the speed. Especially we got a slight down gradient as well. It's a single track all the way down to Glossop, but it's less than a mile, so we should be fine. Glossop's the end of the line. There are buffers 
at the end of the platform. So we'll need to look out for that. So it's just that curve into Dinton where we're going 10 miles per hour. See what I mean? It's about it's got a bit of character. This this end of the line here is completely different to the Piccadilly end. That's what I quite like about it. You gone from all that that sort of major goings on at Piccadilly with multiple tracks going in and out down to this single line running. Pretty good. And it's only 20 quid. And there's a discount off that. So, if you like your UK stuff, go and get it. But, you know, like I said before, if you were, if you're a little bit on the fence about it, if this video has helped you made up your mind, you know that's a that's a type of nice feedback that I like to uh, I like to hear. So drop that down below in the comments. I'll be pleased to hear that. Just over 300 yards into the station, we've got to come down to 10 miles per hour. The speed board. So let's do that. This is Glossop, it's Glossop platform. I've never visited Glossop by the way. So, you know, I don't I don't know what size town it actually is. Uh, I know some of you guys have, have mentioned previously you used to go walking at Glossop or you used to go on your holidays to Glossop so I hope you guys too are pleased to see this come into Trancing World another area that you know well and hopefully have fond memories of ok so what we're going to do we might go back to free roam and then we're going to need to change ends and then we're going to drive up to Hadfield next. So, this is what I mean about uh, it being... Oh, we've got a silver. Well, it's probably because of the timing. But um, this is what I mean about it, it breaking it into several different pieces. So you can run as much of it or as little as you want. So if I continue and I go to free roam, then uh, it'll want us to swap ends. So... Why don't we do that? Why don't we swap ends? So, I'll just come back into the cab. Okay. Uh, let's lock the doors now. And... Uh, break three, is that what we're leaving in? I'm trying to remember now. Turn that off. Turn off the master key. Turn these off. So it was AWS. Uh, that one we just leave. That was already on. That one. Don't need that one. That one will turn off. And DSD will turn off. Right, what about tail lights? We need those on. Uh, we need the lights off. Right, okay. I'm hoping. Do we put it in emergency or B3? Can't remember. Right, we're going to try it. I'm going. I don't know until uh, I get to the other end. You'd think putting the master key in would uh, sort that out for us. I've not changed ends in this one for ages. Mind your backs. Out of my way. 
Yeah, see, we're due at Hadfield now. We don't want this guy disappearing. This lady, I should say. Come on, out me road. Right, let's close that. Let's get the key in. So we do everything in reverse. The more you do this, the more you uh, get used to it, of course. We need the headlights on day. Tail lights need to be off. The safety systems once again. That one, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. And it's these bottom two, isn't it? That's normal, that's already on. Uh, vigilance, normal. Right, I think we're ready to go. Brakes are coming off. Yeah, so, so when you're changing ends, leave it in brake three at the other end. Not emergency. And that seems to work. So, what we're doing now is, we are, if we just look at the map, Dinting's here again, so we came through this side, we're going to the right of it this time, and we're going across to uh, Hadfield. So, we've got a 10 mile an hour out of the station. Uh, don't forget, there's a very, very good cab ride. If you go and have a look on the channel for when I first brought you the news of this route releasing you'll see in the description there I left a link to the uh, the real cab ride on this route it's quite a recent one as well uh, it's doing the whole route as we're doing now it's quite interesting so go and look up that if you haven't already and you'll see how close it is to real life and it is it is I think there's a building missing I remember I remember like a block of flats being here, which isn't here. Uh, but the actual route itself is uh, is pretty spot on so far. Put a bit of speed in. Uh, we've got a 25 coming up just before dinting. So we'll start slowing down for that right now, I think. Just went past the uh, the distance signal board there. So it's not far, is it, between Glossop and Hadfield? Nevertheless, it's quite a little important connection, really. It will be for the locals. So. Dinton is just up here around this corner so 10 mile an hour through Dinton station remember because of the curve I assume It is a very wide track bed, isn't it, this one? Signs of days gone by, I think. Right, so there's the 10 miles an hour. So this time we're going off to the right. So, on this way back, that's interesting, we don't actually call at Dinton on the way back. So, uh, passengers that are in Glossop and Hadfield don't go to Dinton. They can't get to Dinton, it looks like. So, Hadfield, you'd have to go to Glossop. If you wanted to go to Dinton, you'd have to go into Glossop. Uh, then you'd have to stay on and come back out to Dinton. There's no platform on this side, even though we just passed it on our, our left-hand side there. There is no platform. Which is a bit odd. So, 
So we're just over half a mile to go. We can speed up to 15 shortly. Actually, we can speed up to 40. I missed that. So we're going to have to come down to 15 anyway quite soon. But let's just give ourselves a bit of a boost of speed. We'll cover some of this before we come back down. How far behind time are we? A couple of minutes, two and a half minutes. Prepare for this 15. Uh, 400 yards into Hadfield. So once again, we'll have to uh, change ends to go back the other way. So we'll do that. There's the distant signal. Just warning us what's coming up ahead. Because once again, we've got buffers in Hadfield Station, so we need to be uh, we need to be really careful. So yeah, this is part of the old Woodhead line, and. Uh, we have a quick look out without hitting the buffers. It used to carry on beyond the station, and you can see it. You can see the track bed going off up there. That's where it used to carry on. So I know on the TS Classic you can you can play the Woodhead line, can't you? So it's a little bit different to this. Plenty of people waiting. Right, let's get everybody on board. So don't forget, you can stop these parts as you go, run them as different services as it's going to do now, as you can see. So if we just go to free roam. And what we'll do now is we will uh, we'll swap ends again, and we'll go back the other way, so you just see the whole thing. So let's close those doors. We'll start to uh, start closing down here. Turn those lights. So we're going back to Glossop, as you can see. So remember to put that into brake three. Turn the reverser off. Master key out. Just can only have that in at, at one end, and uh, then over here because I haven't got a keyboard, we're doing it this way, so we'll turn these off. That's okay, that's okay. That is that needs to be off, and that needs to be off. All right, let's go up the other end, and I just can't resist, so I'm going to collect this while I'm here. There we go. Come on, traffic jam. There's another one. Newspapers. It's a nice little station, this, isn't it? Try and uh, run past this lady. There's a route map. We'll take that. See, if these guys are here, right? If these guys are waiting, what are they waiting for if they're not getting on with us? We need to chuck this northern guy off. Sorry mate, we're taking this one. Right, same procedure again. Master key on. Oh, hang on. Did that wrong. Master key on. 
reverse to forward, tail lights off, headlights on, day safety systems, AWS, we need uh, down the bottom, we need DSD, and we need vigilance. Doors are already closed, so brakes off, off we go. So you see what I mean, you get a routine going. It feels like you're doing a job, you know. This is your shift. Quite nice. So we've got to Glossop. When we get to Glossop, we're going to turn around. We're going to go back up to Manchester. So we'll get to see the bulk of the route from the opposite direction. So once again, we're quite slow out of Hadfield. Got the 40 coming up, so we'll get a bit of speed up. So, what are you guys thinking then? You gonna pick this up? Had you already decided to pick it up? What do you think? So, this is why I'm glad that um, Dovetail have let us show this early to you guys today. So, I'm really pleased about that. Uh, it means you can, you know, outside the preview stream, you know, you can get ready by, by watching me play it and others, and uh, really hopefully whet your appetite for tomorrow. It's a little bit different, isn't it, when the game gets into the hands of the players, so hopefully, um, you know, watching somebody else play it other than Dovetail um, is, is a bit better for you as well. Gives you a bit more of a broader, a broader view. So if it helps, definitely let me know. And I'm in all sorts of trouble for slowing down for this 10. So we'll just do what we can. So off to the right there, you could go straight up there to um, Manchester again. That was Dintin platform that you could just see. But we need to provide this connecting service between Hadfield and Glossop for the locals. We'll do that first, and then we can get back up to Piccadilly then. And actually, it doesn't it doesn't take that long, does it, to go between Glossop and Hadfield? Really, we're already on our way back. You know, it's a it's a pretty much an immediate turnaround. I mean, I probably arrived a couple of minutes late. So we were ready to turn around, but the process of you know the process of shutting down the cab and switching ends actually isn't too difficult, is it? So you can do it very quickly in this unit. Northern trains, love it. So I suppose some of these passengers down at Glossop, if they're going, if they're going to, um, if they're going back up to Piccadilly, they could choose to have, have jumped on the train, couldn't they? When we first came into Glossop, or they might have waited. They might have waited for us to come back. Depends really. They might want to go for a little jolly up to Adfield so they can make sure they've got a seat. Or they may just wait on the platform. We may see some familiar faces when we get back here to Glossop. Right, we're going to be mindful of this 10. 200 yards. Like I said, when you've done this a few times, stopping distances, learning the route, there are not many speed changes, are there? So I generally don't 
play without the hood. It's just, just my personal preference. But I know a lot of you do. Uh, this could be one that you could learn quite easily, or even I could learn quite easily, and play without the hood. Right, this is Glossop once again. So we'll go for the shutdown procedure again, just one last time, and then we'll be on our way back up to Piccadilly. And that will be a complete round trip and uh, a good look round Piccadilly Station as well. Which is good. We've had a look at the scenarios and uh, what they're all about. Gone through the pricing. So all that remains is that uh, you pick this up tomorrow once it's available. And, uh, you know, I hope you guys really enjoy it as well. Right, the doors are open. I'm going to start shutting things down so I'm gonna put the tail lights on first get the uh, get the lights off uh, I'll go back to free roam so carry on with that we'll put the reverser to off take the key out actually let's put the key in was I in break three there we go right now we'll take the key out Uh, we'll shut the doors when we get to the other end. We'll let people get on if they want to get on. Right, let's get that off. Then the bottom two. Okay, right, down to the other end we go. One last time. There's another one. Can't resist. Can't resist. And another. And another. <laughs> Why not? It's less to get afterwards, isn't it? Right, let's chuck uh, this lady out again. She's sick of me doing this. This is the second time I've done this to her. Pause that. Let's get the main doors locked. Because then once I'm set up, we're ready to go, aren't we? Pull that in forward. We need the top one and the bottom two. Vigilance, DSD. Right, lights, that's the other thing. Tail lights off at this end. Put that on day, alright. Quick toot, and we are off to Dinting. Perfect, loving it, loving it. I can see why they brought this route out. It's different, isn't it? They, they had the operator's license for Northern, so you know they got they got a certain amount of routes they can they can bring out with the Northern license. Still wanted to use it, and uh, this one with this triangle at this end provides something a little bit different than usual, doesn't it? And uh, the way you can go back to free roam each time is quite nice. You just continue the services. You don't have to keep going back to the uh, Back to the timetable, which is what I was saying at the beginning, you can use this one as a perfect one to simulate the shift, the driver's shift. But it's not compulsory. You don't have to play it like that. I think I will though. So leaving Glossop behind one last time. In the background there. And we'll come up to speed before we have to slow down right down to 10 again to come into Dinton. We'll keep our eyes open on the way back as well because I didn't see any freight trains on the way down. So, if we're lucky, we might see a 66 pass us. But 
but I'm not sure how often those uh, freight trains are running on the route. Right, so this is Dinton coming up. We're preparing for this uh, 10 as we go through Dinton station. So it could be that there is another train waiting for us. As we come out of Dinton, Dinting, I should say, uh, where it goes off into uh, double track again, there could be something waiting for us. We'll see. Good out that tent. So I mean, so it's one in, one out at this end of the uh, this end of the line. So you've got to complete this bit in the triangle quite quickly because you're holding up the rest of the uh, the rest of the services. So we'll get everyone picked up quick, at dint in, and then we'll get back onto the main part up to uh, Piccadilly. So, you see this is where it goes, on top of the viaducts, where it goes uh, into uh, two tracks. There's nothing waiting there right now, but there could be something quite close. It's quite a good screenshot. Right, off we go. Broad Bottoms is next, uh, two miles. So, onto the viaduct. watch the speed temptation to just you know put my foot down as it were <laughs> but I can't yet very very slow section isn't it in the triangle and it should be for a safety perspective you know now we can go Take another there while we're on the uh, the viaducts. See there, there is one waiting for us. So he hasn't come on to the viaduct. He's further back. Let's just check the stops. They should be the same as when we came down. So we've got Broadbottom, Hattersley, Godley, Newton for Hyde, Flowery Field, Guybridge, Ashbury's and Piccadilly. So it's exactly the same. Don't know if we've got any express services as it were to Glossop. I would assume that they they stop at the same stations, not sure. We didn't stop at Ardwick, did we? So there should be some services that stop at Ardwick. Ardwick's the first station outside of Piccadilly, as I recall. Open the window. Get a chance to hear a little bit more of what's going on outside. And we've got Broad Bottom in just under half a mile. Still three minutes behind. I, I, to be honest though, it's the first time we've done it. We've had a bit of a look round. The service is made up of several parts. Being three minutes behind isn't that bad, is it really? I don't think it is. 
there's room for improvement there, but uh, you know, I'll take it to start with. I kind of like the idea though, these stops are quite quick. Let's, let's just try and count roughly how many seconds we've got once we uh, get the doors open for passenger loading. I don't think it's a lot. Could even be 20 seconds. We can count it on the clock at the top, can't we? Once they're open. Right, so that's just stops. Right, let's wait till 20. Are you ready? There. So, we started it at 33 and 20 seconds. That's 10. About 11 seconds. 11 seconds the doors are open. That's fast, isn't it? But, you can imagine on a service like this, as we've been talking all the time, haven't we, about the need to not hold up the other traffic on the line. So you can imagine the stopping, you know, the stopping uh, timings are quite, they're maybe not 11 seconds, they won't be that ridiculous, but you can imagine them being quite quick. And I think, you know, throughout the day, some of these stations are not going to be that busy, are they? There might be sometimes you pull up at a station, nobody's nobody's waiting to get on. So, you know, they might be even quicker. So, Hattersley is next. There's a few stops, but they're quite close together, pretty much. Get our stopping distance right on this one without throwing the passengers into the front of the train. That is, it's quite a long platform, actually. This so the stopping on this one should be all right. There we go, less than five yards is good, it's about three in the end. So, this is Hattersley. Better jump on everyone, the doors are closing. They're going to have to wait for the next one. Can you imagine if you miss one, going back the other way? You're thinking, oh, I've got to wait for that to come back now. Although, the real drivers are probably more pro than I am. They're probably, you know they probably do the turnaround or whatever in like, you know, 10, 15 minutes tops. Right, Godly is where we're off to next. Yes, I think you guys are going to have a lot of fun on this route actually. You could go on, uh, you know, you could go on Castle Versberg and experience the IC1 with all its speed and distance. And then, as a complete change, you could come on this on this one, which is which is short burst, uh, a small little contained route, which you can do in a circular fashion, not just going A to B. Feels like we've done a circle. Uh, it's quite relaxing. Uh, doesn't feel doesn't feel pressured. You get to change ends a lot, so you have that experience. Yeah, it's all right. 
And this one's on the money. See, I mean, I'm spotting, I'm spotting all these collectibles as I'm coming in and out. I'll be back. I'll be back for you, son. Right, let's get them locked. Newton for Hyde, half a mile. Yeah, when we were in Piccadilly Station, we were on platform 14, and, and the Blackpool train was in right at the beginning when I was telling you about Cracker on TV. If you haven't seen that, by the way, go and look it up. It's on the ITV player, ITVX. Good series, good, good series from the 90s. Lots and lots of locations in Manchester in that, if you know Manchester. Um, if we'd have jumped on that Blackpool train, I wonder how far we would have got before it kicked us off. Because we've got Oxford Road and Deansgate, haven't we? If we were to carry on up there, but obviously those stations are not in. So it probably would have just come to the end of the uh, the line, wouldn't it, for us? As the as the train went off into the ether, which is uh, the direction, the general direction of uh, Blackpool. We'd have, we'd have probably got maybe two or three hundred yards off the end of the platform, I would guess. Can you imagine though if the if the if the Preston to Blackpool route was actually Manchester to Blackpool via Preston? Oh that that now that is the ultimate route for me. Honestly. Who knows? Who knows? I'm trying to remember actually what was on the roadmap after this release. Was there anything else on the roadmap? There's a class 700, isn't there? Which is local D local DLC. What routes were on there? I can't remember if there's any routes on there. And the other thing is, I wonder if we're having some kind of summer release this year. There's nothing been said about that. Was it September last year? It used to be the beginning of August, didn't it? it used to be the beginning of August. Um, and then I think it moved to kind of the beginning of September. But once again, nothing's been said about that yet. But uh, the roadmap definitely did say a just trains route. And everyone's, everyone is thinking that that is the Preston to Blackpool one. Um, but all we know is that they're they're making a route. There was a screenshot teased, and people were trying to locate where that was. But it was very well. It, it looked very general to me that screenshot. There's some of you though that know some of these routes like the back of your hand, and can you know can usually. I think it was. I think when East Coastway came out, there was a screenshot like that put out a teaser before we knew it was East Coastway. And loads of you players got that on the forums and said exactly where it was and then showed, you know, sort of Google Earth real photographs of it. I was amazed. I didn't know you could know a route in such detail, but some of you guys do. Anyway, Guide Bridge, 1.6 miles. What's after Guide Bridge? What did we say? We got Ashbury's and then Piccadilly. Nice little run though, isn't it? It really is. I've enjoyed it. And I've driven 323 miles in the Class 323, so obviously that includes the uh, Birmingham Cross City line as well not just on here 
what you've seen me drive today is the total that I've driven on here. This is this is really my very first look at this route. So I'm glad you guys were able to uh, share that with me. And uh, just see my live reaction to it, as it were. I'm a fan, you can tell. But I want to know what you guys think. I know you're not going to get your hands on it till tomorrow, so you might want to come back to the video and just uh, just drop a comment once you've picked it up. Tell me what you like, tell me what you don't like. Anything you've discovered. Any little Easter eggs, etc. Let me know about those. But uh, once again, this is Guy Bridge. Look at the freight come out of there. I can see the railhead treatment train tankers parked over there in the sidings. That's an that's a nice little DLC that layers onto quite a few uh, different routes, isn't it? The sixty six railhead treatment train. I was running that the other night on uh, southeastern high speed. Quite enjoyed that. All right, guide bridge. Just guide bridge actually refers to a bridge. I know it's not this bridge. It's a railway bridge, but is guide bridge a thing or is it just the name of the town? Not sure. Ashbury's is next so this is the biggest actual stretch between stations this isn't it on the uh, on the line 3.4 miles so we just past the 60 board so let's do that Decent amount of points as well, really. Up from Glossop there, 7,300 so far, if points are your thing. I still do wish for those action points, you know, that we could use them for something. I mean, they're there, aren't they? Just in case in the future we can use them if DTG decide to implement something. Right now, it's just to it's just to build your level up, isn't it? Uh, level doesn't really mean anything. I had to reset my level across, well, three times, I think. The original TSW, I had a certain level. And we had uh, TSW 2, uh, and then TSW 3. So I've had three sets of levels. I think, what am I, 400... And I think I'm about 430, level 437 right now in TSW3. I think in the first one I got up to something like level 700. I think TSW2 I got to around 600. I've written them down somewhere. So I've written them down, even though I just said to you, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it's a gauge for me so that I know how much I've played, you know. But the other thing about that is, you don't get as much points if you're running the American Freight. You can spend two hours running American Freight and get half the points or less than you might get from this this short run. You know, so they're not. It, it, that makes your level even more not nonsensical because it's it is good if you're a stato, but you know what I mean. Less important. So we've got Ashbury's coming up, we've got a 40 just after the station, between Ashbury's and Piccadilly. So there are some stations here, you see, we've not stopped at. So some of the services will stop there. And as I mentioned, Ardwick, we didn't stop at Ardwick in this service. So some of the services are a little bit different. Just now we're starting to get 
into the more built up industrial area of the main the main city aren't we we're just on the outskirts right now so we got half a mile into Ashbury's then we're straight through to Piccadilly and that's our round trip done You would hope in the future, you know, if we ever do get something Avanti, for example, uh, West Coast Main Line, anything like that with an Avanti train, you would think that they would also layer in, even as AI, on this, just to make Piccadilly look a little bit more full. And there could be there could be quite a few operators actually that uh, that layer in as the DLCs are released. So, you know, what Piccadilly looks like now, as we're going in and out, all with Northern Northern Rail services sat there waiting, it could get quite colourful after a few more UK DLCs, couldn't it? Right, let's have a look at Ashbury's. For 11 seconds. <laughs> get that close and we'll get back into Piccadilly. Which is one and a half miles away, that's all. So at this point, tracks start to get wider as we build up. Piccadilly should pork out and show itself quite soon as well. Let's have a look outside. So this here is Ardwick, I believe, and this is Ardwick Depot. This is a Northern Trains Depot. And uh, you can just see Piccadilly. You can see the, the roof of Piccadilly. So services to London, from Piccadilly to London, come out from this side of Piccadilly Station. Uh, this is where I was talking about the Pendolinos, etc. If we get uh, if we get some Avanti in the game at some point. We are going into platform two. Used to play football down here. Used to be some uh, artificial pitches just down there at Ardwick. Many, many years ago. I could run then without losing my breath. <laughs> I used to score a few as well. So here's our approach into Piccadilly.
See the city skyline there in the background. So from here you could jump onto the trams in real life, take you into the city centre, Piccadilly Gardens, you can go over to Victoria, catch services on elsewhere. Really good, really good. Quite I'm quite pleased with this. I like how these walls have been done over here as well. So I mean these these are nicely done. Yeah, it's grand. So that is the end of that service. So we did a complete round trip down to Glossop over to Hadfield, back to Glossop, back to Manchester Piccadilly. So, I hope you've enjoyed it as a first look. What do you think? Let me know what you think. I'm sure, I'm going to do this as a premiere, I'm sure you've been telling me all the way through what you think. But if you haven't, and you're watching this on a replay, let me know down below. And uh, Thanks very much for uh, jumping on with me and taking a look. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Um, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've all subscribed. We'll be playing plenty of this over the coming days and weeks. And uh, when you do get your hands on the DLC tomorrow, the main thing is enjoy it and let me know what you think. Until the next time, thanks everybody. See you again soon.